Hello again and welcome my dear friends. I'm Ryan Campbell, you're here with The Conversation and we're talking to some very special people today. We're talking to Clint Bauer, he is the Executive Director of uh, Watch and Pat Coral, you are President of the Board for Watch and you are also a parent, is that correct? That is correct. And that's kind of, being a, being a mom's kind of like your number one job, I guess. That's the best. Yeah. That's the best. Well, welcome very much to the show. I've wanted Thank to you. talk to Watch for so long because it's it's an amazing program and you you are very visible in the community but for somebody that isn't aware of what watch is and what it does could you briefly kind of describe what watch is and and the community that you serve watch is a program that serves people with developmental intellectual disabilities they've been doing it for over 50 years now last year was our 50th anniversary um, we provide it's called adult day training. So it's kind of like school. They go to classes, they also work, they have jobs in the community. We have work crews, you've probably seen the watch buses out and about in the community. We currently serve about 65 people. Um, prior to the pandemic, we were close to 100. Mm. So our numbers have went down and we're slowly trying to get people in. Our, our biggest challenge right now is, is staffing getting people hired because we're required to provide a one to four ratio. So we have to have one staff person for every four participants that attend the program. Mm -hmm. So that's in a nutshell what Watch does. Wow. So what, what, what are some of the places that people would see uh, Watch uh, participants in the community? Oh, at the hospital, they clean um, the parking lot, yeah. do landscaping, um, at the Black Oak Casino. Yeah. Um, we used to have quite a few more work crews yeah. out there, but we've during yes. the pandemic we had to cut back as well. Yeah, so. I've seen them down there at the park too. Yes. So Pat, uh, can you tell me about what what are some of the benefits of having uh, a program like this for people with intellectual disabilities? What what do they get out of the Watch program? It actually is a two way street. It is giving that person uh, with the intellectual situation giving them a place to go every day where they're accepted as they are. They can do projects. They can do, um, like my son likes to do knitting. That's where he learned to do it. And um, it gives them, like I said, a place to go that is their place. It also gives the parent a little respite mm -hmm. because it can be a difficult situation to have a, a person with that that needs you all the time. This way you're passing some of that need on to the program, mm -hmm. which has been fantastic. Yeah. And it is a great program because it's not an adult babysitting service, which is what you don't want. What you want is something that they go and they're productive yeah. like everyone else. Yeah, and, and I guess it, it's, it can be uncomfortable for people to uh, socialize unless they're in a group of their own peers sometimes and so is that is it kind of like a way to create a peer group mm -hmm. for people with intellectual disabilities so that they can interact uh, one of the things I do like though is that watch will take participants consumers they're called uh, will take them out into the public just to shop or whatever it yeah. keeps them visible and this county is very good about the way they treat people with disabilities here. Yeah. And so it is, it's important that, that they are also part of the community, yeah. not just in their own home or their own situation, but in the community. Well, why is that important? I think it's important because then it teaches people that they're like everyone else. In most cases, they're like everyone else. They want the same things, they need the same things. Um, it's just, it's just, my, my daughter's a, special ed teacher at Somerville High School, and she makes sure that there is a lot of attention in the public and keeps them aware, people aware that we are all pretty much the same at different levels. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's, um, how did things used to be when it came to people with intellectual mm -hmm. disabilities? What was it? Have things improved? Is is sort of the model that Watch uses? Is that informed by by any kind of practices that were happening in the past? I, I guess, Clint, you can start. That's kind of a question for both of you, right. but well, it's, you both it's have changed, a lot of experience it's in this area. Changed a lot over the years. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where a parent like Pat 
when they had a child with a disability, the doctor would have told them immediately, mm -hmm. put them away in an institution. Mm -hmm. you, they can't be taken care of in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and then back in the early 80s. And we're not talking a very long time ago. Oh, no, this was in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Yeah. I was told in 1977 to put him in a home. Wow. Yeah. That he would never do anything. He would never be able to uh, speak. He would never be able to walk. He would never be able to be part of the family as a, as a whole, which of course we said absolutely not. We would not do such a thing. And he has been probably the light of our family. Wow. And, and can I ask, what, what's your son's name? His name is Benjamin. Benjamin. How old's Benjamin? Benjamin will this Saturday will be forty six years old. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so. he's, he's a he's a sweet young man, yeah. has a temper like everyone, <laughs> but he, he's a very loving person. He's very accepted in the community. Most everyone knows who he is yeah. in Twain Heart. Yeah, so. yeah and that, that's kind of the nice thing about living in a small community. Yeah. And, I, and I understand that's, that's part of the reason, watch is a big part of the reason that uh, you chose to live in this community. That's very true. Um, ben aged out all uh, participants age out of the public school system at the age of 22. Mm -hmm. And when Ben aged out, we had... And, and can you describe, what, what does age out mean? That means that they no longer are in the public school system. Okay. They, so they will graduate. Those resources. They will then graduate with their class or whichever they happen to be with if they're not in, uh, you know, even in transition. And they will um, then go into a private or um, a county a um, type of business or program and so we lived in San Mateo County and we checked out all kinds of programs in San Mateo County and it's not that they were not good programs they just were not the right ones for Ben and so um, we started looking around and we already had the house in Twain Heart and decided we check on the watch program and I loved it and Ben loved it right from the beginning so my husband and myself, my daughter and son-in-law, we all quit our jobs in Redwood City and in San Mateo County. And we moved permanently here so he could be in the program. And um, it was the best move we made for him. It really was. The program was great right from the beginning. He's been in the program for 23 years. And things change. He's changed. Things have changed. We're in a different building than we were in the beginning. We were in a very small building to begin with. Mm -hmm. We're in a nice building now, very nice building. And um, it's, it's just been the best thing that we could have happened. COVID was very difficult, but they still kept contact with the consumers, whether it be on Zoom, it basically was on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And they would make sure that those consumers knew that they were still involved and they didn't just leave them high and dry for two years. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Hmm. They even did projects yeah. by Zoom. Like what kind of project? He did some building, but they could do small building situations. He built a cabin, a little cabin out of popsicle sticks. They dropped the package hmm. off at the house as to what he could do. And it now sits on our mantle. <laughs> wow, it's, that's fantastic. Well, and that's something Watch is known for too, isn't it? It's, it's uh, they produce art and, mm -hmm. um, the woodworking project and I and Clint, can you tell me what's what's the story on the fishes? <laughs> That's Watch's signature item they create the ceramic fish. Um, in fact, we were awarded a a grant to create a mural to put on a building in downtown that will include the fish, but it's also a much bigger mural. Um, so now we're trying to get the location approved. Um, and the grant is primarily to employ people with disabilities as artists. Mm -hmm. So they're all getting paid as artists. Um, so it's kind of exciting for us. I think it's going to be a lot of work, though. I've seen the <laughs> scope of the project. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's amazing. You know, one thing that, that Pat had pointed out, that having a program like Watch is essential to some families. Mm -hmm. Because if not, one of those family members has to stay home to take care of their child. And we know in these days, it's, you need two income households. Um, the nice thing about California is once they're out of school, they can automatically qualify for services. Other states have waiting lists, yeah. 15, 20,000 people in Florida, because in California, the services are an entitlement, where other states, they're not. It's based upon the state budgeting money to serve new people. 
um, I was, that was something I was very impressed with when I moved here. Yeah, and you're, you're coming from uh, Florida. Florida, right? Yeah, I just started at Watch last May. I was hired by the board. Oh, okay. And moved from Miami to, to Tuolumne County. Well, welcome. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a different world. Well, and, and I was, you were kind of talking a little bit about the structure of Watch, and that, that's something that, that I'm, I'm not familiar with, is it, it kind of works as a public agency in some ways. It's, it's sort of publicly funded, but it's a nonprofit. No, it's, a, it's a private nonprofit. The, how, we, how does that work? But you, we contract with the state, the I government, see. to provide the services. And, and do you take donations? Yes, do you work? Okay. we welcome donations. And actually, we have a, uh, a resale shop here called Good Stuff. Where so is that? It's on 49, right by the Arco gas station. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, that's where the old uh, Salvation Army. Salvation Army yes. there. Okay. Yes. What, what are some of the things that you sell there, Pat? What, what kind of what do you buy? They what sell. You they sell everything you can think of. Whatever um, people donate. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of donations, and you can't take everything no. that you get. <laughs> but they have clothes, books, uh, anything that a that a regular or a normal secondhand store would have is what they've got. Right, I see. And it's, it's very nice and neat. It's, it has uh, someone that runs it and then they have participants that work there mm -hmm. and that is a paying job yep. and they get paid for that. And, and they're watch participants. Yes, they are. There. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And they, they have some that will unload and some that will set up and some that will help sell. Yeah. So it's a really good experience for some of them that are able to do that type of work. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about, so I, I look, so we've got the, the, um, the acronym for WATCH. It's, it's Work Activities for Tuolumne County Handicapped. Mm -hmm. And I know that, that there, it seems the terminology for people with these types of developmental disabilities has changed over time. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because, um, you know, we don't really say handicapped anymore. We certainly don't say retarded. And there are some very terrible things that mm -hmm. term terms that people would refer to um, people that are differently abled. And how how has that changed? And how have we become, I guess, more enlightened as as a community? When we were told about my son, we were told he was a mongoloid. Mm. Now. That terminology has been, is, is very antiquated. Yeah. This was 1977. It wasn't that long ago. I know. That's, yeah. that's not that long no. ago. <laughs> and he, Ben Stark. Not for us, anyway. No, no. Maybe, maybe there might be younger people watching. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. Um, Benjamin started programs when he was 10 months old. And I started him in what was called CAR in Palo Alto, California. And it, that stood for Committee Association for the Retarded. That would never be accepted now. Yeah. That is... One of the things, like I said, my daughter teaches at Somerville, and she does not allow that word under any circumstances to be used in her classrooms. And she explains why yeah. that is not accepted. And you will, you'll notice in a lot of things, political and that sort of things, that you'll see people say, he acts like a retard. Mm -hmm. We used to say that when I was in high school. I mean, that was a saying that was actually said when I was in high school. You know, that was a retardo. Well, you don't do that anymore. And things change with time. And different ability, I love. I love that. And because they do have abilities that are different. And so let's use terminology that we would want used for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's just like with Ben, I would, I don't even consider him that much different than anybody else. He loves to be loved. He loves people, he's kind, he loves his dog. I mean, he's <laughs> like everybody else. What kind of dog does he have? We have, we have eight dogs. Oh my God. <laughs> we have, um, he has a, uh, a dog that he rescued that had just had puppies. Oh wow. And her name is Gracie and she is a dachshund mix. Okay. And he loves her and the rest are chihuahuas. They're all, they're all rescue dogs. Yeah. Does uh, uh, working with animals, does that play any kind of role in watch at all? Mm, not really. They do go out to the, what is that horse ranch where they rescue horses? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They yeah. go out there every week. And um, What do they do help, at the horse ranch? Help take care of the horses. Wow. 
Yeah, they go to Jamestown to Railtown too every every week to wash the windows on the trains. So what what's the watch team doing today? Today they're heading up to Pinecrest Lake to do parking lot cleaning and picking up garbage. And I think there's a group of about eight of them going up there today. So and they'll stay up there all day. They'll have lunch up there and then come back in the afternoon. Yeah. How how often does does watch operate? Is it uh five days a week or? Really, it's more than five days a week because yeah. we also operate a program called High Gear, which is a social recreation program. And that operates on Saturdays as well. Um, that's why when Pat said something about them being out in the community and giving time off, t- some free time to the parents, Ben in particular, every Tuesday he attends an activity at Watch. Either they go out in the community or they have some activities there. So that gives her two or three extra hours in the, in the late afternoon, early evening. And maybe she wants to do something. So, because right now, Ben, they leave at three, Ben's home, and then she's with Ben the rest of the evening. So, yeah. which greatest Tuesday is Ben's day that he has dinner and a movie. Yep. And the movie is actually shown on the big screen at Watch. And they order pizza or tacos or something. And he's there and, t- and he gets home about six o'clock that night. That's, I call that my free day. Yeah. That's the day that I can do any of the things that I want to do and not have to worry about getting home in time to meet the bus. And so it's, it's like I said, it's a respite for parents too. And I was going to ask you about that. I mean, we talked about what the uh, consumers, uh, the patrons of Watch get out of it. What, what do you as the parent get out of uh, Watch as an organization? A little freedom. A little freedom. Yeah. A little freedom. It's, um, there are times when... Ben can be very demanding of your time, not in a nasty way, but he, he's into a lot of stuff like he likes to watch Mama's Family. Well, I have to find that <laughs> for him. I like Mama's Family. I love it. I didn't it. know anybody still watched lo- that. That's oh, a- yeah. I even have them all. Um, <laughs> so what I do is he likes Zelma to have Harper. them. <laughs> he has them on his computer because you can get them there. And so I'll be doing something and he'll come back in. He'll meet, need for me to set that up. Mm-hmm. He'll sit down, he'll decide he doesn't want that one, I have to go set up another one. So it's getting that little bit of time that I can do, actually clean house, mm-hmm. do laundry, um, go out with my friends. I, I belong to Seroptimus and Twainheart and Rotary and Sonora. And so that gives me time to go to those organizations. And um, it's, just, it's just some time for me. And, and you've been, this is now your fourth term as president my fourth of term. the Watch Board. Mm-hmm. What, what, uh, how have you seen it change? What are some of your um, goals or what, what would you like to see uh, change over the in The biggest the thing we wanted to see changed was that building when we first got there. Yeah, what, what building is that? I can't even remember the name of the street it's on, right next to Banks Glass up okay. above. The, the old building. So right, right yeah. downtown. Yeah. And so it was, it was fine, but it was very small. And then there was another part of the building that was separated from it. This way we can all be in one situation. Um, we've think, had... Yeah, I think they've been in three, three, three or four different buildings since yeah. they started. They yeah. were up on Mona Way for a while. This building we have now, we bought this building. Mm-hmm. This is the first building we've actually owned. They leased buildings before. Where is, where is your new building? On Cabazoo, Cabazoo, right next okay. to Skyline Place. Oh, great. Yeah. And if you walk in, you right away, you'll recognize the carpeting. It was all donated <laughs> by Black Oak, Black Casino. Oak Casino. Oh, okay. So it's their carpeting. <laughs> um, we've had um, different organizations that have put in the garden and the patio, and they use it as a, their yearly gift, and we get chosen for that. And I've watched, <laughs> as strange as this is, I've watched them all grow older. Mm. Because when Ben started there, he was 22 years old, mm. and, or 23 years old. And I've watched all the participants get older and lose some, some, you know, it's, it's been a real experience for me to see the lives that other people have, not just myself. And believe me, when you go in and you think you have issues, there's always somebody that has one a little bit worse than you do. And it makes you very thankful for what you do have. If there are people in the community that, that might be able to use these services and maybe they aren't aware of them, how would they get in touch with you uh, to find out more about Watch? They can call me. Um, Watch's phone number is 209-533-0510. Um, 
Anybody that watched it would answer the phone could tell you everything you want to know about the place. We have several long-term employees that have been there through, this is their third executive director now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have a lady that's been there, next year will be her 40th anniversary. Oh, okay. Um, and yes, as Pat said, we also have several participants that are getting old, so they may only want to come one or two days a week, because yeah. they're like, they're retired. Yeah. Um, you know, Watch was known as more of a work program. Mm -hmm. um, people used to do what was called contract work. You know, you got paid, they got paid a sub-minimum wage based upon their ability. We don't do that anymore. Everyone who works at Watch gets paid minimum wage. Um, on all the work crews, in, in our store, everywhere, so. How do you, d does that matter to the, the people that participate to feel like they have a, a job and a career and that they're contributing and that they're getting yeah. paid for the work that they're doing? And I mean, wh that what does that do? Just like our, ourselves and our jobs, we feel part of the community. We're contributing, but we're getting paid. Mm -hmm. They love getting their paychecks. You know, when they sell one of the, the fish that they make, they get a check directly for whatever, the, whatever they paid for that fish. So if they sold for $30, they get a check for $30. So I, I think that that's very important. Um, and just being part of the community, that's really the most important part because for so many years, people with disabilities were isolated, put away in institutions, mm -hmm. or families would keep them home just to protect them. Um, to keep them safe, and now we're trying to s let everyone see that we are part of the community and we're contributing members of society. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that does have, because I think all of us want to be valued members of our society. If, uh, if people wanted to volunteer, or if they didn't want to volunteer but they still wanted to contribute, are there opportunities for people to do that? Yeah, well, every year we hold um, what's called a legacy luncheon. Um, and we invite people to come and learn more about Watch. And we do a monthly, um, very informal, get to know Watch program called How Watch Works. And we'll invite small groups of interested people in the community to come and have lunch, free lunch. We'll give you a tour, let you meet some of the participants. And hopefully by learning about Watch, you'll want to be part of Watch. Hmm. You know, either through volunteer or through financial contributions. We, we won't say no to anything. So hmm. we, we need the community support because all of our funding does come from the state. And the funding we get is not adequate to provide the services that we provide. I see. And one thing we do about the lunches too is we make it 12 to 1. So people that work, have jobs and whatnot, are not going to be held over. It's 12 o'clock and you're out of there by one o'clock so see. that you can get back to your job. What, what are they gonna learn at a, at a lunch? They're going to walk around, they're going to see perhaps someone working on the fish or somebody working in the art program, which my son happens to like. Um, and actually they eat lunch at 11.30, so normally they're pretty much done with that, but they can see some of the projects go on in the building. And they also can learn one of the participants will talk about what they do at Watch. Mm -hmm. So one of our consumers will come in and talk about what they do. And the pride on their face is always amazing mm -hmm. to watch. And um, so they pretty much learn how everything works, the way things go. And it's, it's a very, it's a lot of information in a very short period of time. And some of it you get while you're eating lunch. Mm -hmm. So they can talk to you. Well, you know, many people don't, personally know someone with a disability. Mm -hmm. So it really allows them to see that disabled people are the same as anybody else in the right. community. Yeah. Um, and then there's also um, younger families that may have a disabled young child, but they don't know what services are out for them in the future. Um, you'd be surprised how many people I've spoken to that didn't even know that this existed, that they could do this when they got out of school. Um, you know, so I really want us to be able to do outreach to the community so the community can learn what, what raising a disabled child is about. Mm -hmm. Pat, if there's uh, anybody considering uh, having their child join Watch or, mm -hmm. or a family member, what, what would you say to them? About attending Watch? Yeah, if they were curious about it. I was a parent advocate for years. Yeah. So... Um, Basically, what we do is we give them options. These are the options that you have. If you, some people 
don't want their child to go to a program. They want to keep them home. That's what we call a helicopter parent. <laughs> but um, I Which can be kind of, uh, it can wear on you. It can wear on you and it can wear on the participant also. Yeah. The, the person that's being protected. Don't overprotect. Mm -hmm. We don't need to overprotect these children as, as they become adults. They, they need to be protected, yes. Like my son can't be left without somebody to watch him because he'll go off with whoever is there because mm -hmm. he's just friendly. But it is a place where they can actually, it's very important to give them that independence. Everybody needs independence. You can't hold on forever and not give a little something that is they it? can do on their own. And I think it's real important that yeah. they go to something like this program and get that independence and get that camaraderie that they have. Because those are basically the friends that Ben has are there. And there's, so they do things together. There's an old concept and the book was written about, it's called The Dignity of Risk. And that's what we try to give our people. Um, because parents tend to be very overprotective. But mm. the only way you and I learned anything is through trying and doing it ourselves. So you have to let them try. Um, and I learned that very early on in my career, and I, that's kind of how I practiced these operations since. So, yeah. but it's hard for some parents to do it. Believe me, because it is society is scary, yeah. and people are mean. Yeah. Have you seen? I mean, where? How does our uh, Tuolumne County I've rack, never rack had up a mean in thing. terms of? Never. Nothing yeah. ever has been nasty or mean to him in any way. Hmm. Um, one of the things that little stories I like to tell that I think is kind of sweet is that when my daughter was six and Ben was three, she took him for sharing. And she asked if it would be okay, can I take Ben for sharing? And I said, well, sure, you know, that's fine. And she explained to a first grade class what Down syndrome was in the mind of a six-year-old. And I think the earlier that we learn and that we teach what is going on with, um, with special, special people. Everyone's special. So to say special needs always kind of is an issue for me because everybody has a specialty. But I think it's important that we start very young and explain everything to the, as much as they can understand. I mean, her description of Down syndrome was the most heartwarming thing I ever, spot, I ever watched. But that opened up the eyes to those kids. And do you know that some of those kids that were in that first grade class still are friends with Ben? Hmm. And they still will Facebook him or talk to Dina about him. And I think that's really important. Pat Coral, Clint Bauer, thank you so much for your time. It's been really a treat for me getting to learn more about Watch, it's something I've wanted to learn more about, and I feel like I did. So thank you very much, and hopefully people watching learned a little bit about the wonderful things that you're doing in our community. Thank you. Thank you, and, and come thank back you. anytime. I'd, I'd love, to, it, love to talk thank more you. about it. I'm sure there's a lot more stories we could cover. Yes, there is. Thank you. All right. And thank you again for joining us, my dear friends, and please come back next week. We'll have another interesting conversation about Tuolumne County. Take care.